you've had a busy year. In the last 13 months, you were hired at Appalachian State as running backs coach. At the end of the year, you get promoted to offensive coordinator. And then before you really got started in that job, you moved to SMU. Um, what attracted you to SMU? What made you decide to make that move? Yeah, I think really just kind of checked all the boxes. Um, you know, I think kind of a combination of getting back to Texas, working for a guy who I have a little bit of a history with and then just some familiarity with, with Coach Dykes. Um, you know, being being aligned and kind of just philosophy wise of, of offensive football and just football in general. Um, you know, and then just a lot of the great momentum that's going on with SMU football. I think that was all those things kind of combined together. You know, if if it wasn't all combined together, I don't know if I would have, but like I've said before, I think, you know, this this place, this staff, these players, just all of it checked the checked all the boxes for me and it really just kind of happened at the right time. You mentioned you had a bit of a history with Coach Dykes. What, what is that relationship like? Where have you crossed paths before? Well, you know, my brother got into a, to college football coaching, just college football in general, while, while Sonny was at Texas Tech. And, uh, you know, he was a walk-on player. And just kind of through that um, connection and just being around that offense at that time, you know, I had a little bit of a, a sense of what was going on there. Just kind of knew of Sonny and that staff as that whole thing was going on at Texas Tech and as it kind of boomed. Um, you know, and then just ever since then, you know, I've never personally worked with them. Um, but I've always kind of been in that same network of people that have kind of come from that same background up through the business. And just everything I've heard has been consistent through the years of what, what type of guy he is and kind of how he operates. and. And what he believes in, you know, and I think just that was a, a big draw for me. No coach is going to hire an assistant without doing homework on you, and obviously I'm assuming you did homework on SMU and Dallas, and you haven't been here very long, but has there been anything you've found at SMU that's different than what you had in your mind uh, as far as preconceived notions about the school or about the city? Yeah. Yeah, actually, you know, I think just the people in general have been just so welcoming. Um, you know, just as a whole, just as a community, you kind of, I guess, probably come into a job thinking everybody's going to be excited, and, you know, that's in the athletic department and all that, but I've been a little bit surprised just by the community in general of just the branding that this department and Sonny and everybody's done the last few years as he's been here. You know, I can tell that from a person coming from outside in, you know, that's, that's a big deal, and, uh, you know, I think the other thing too is just um, just in our first few practices, how many people are at the practices. You know, just because you're in Dallas, how accessible and how easy it is for recruits and those high school coaches to be here um, and to get here. That's been that's been pretty cool to see. You know, and it's just lo it's location, location, location. I mean, there's a lot of truth to that, and that's been pretty neat to see in the first two practices for me. When you had your first conversations with Coach Dykes, who was doing more of the salesman role? Were you selling him on you as a candidate, or was he selling you on an SMU as a place that you should come to join his staff? Yeah, I mean, I would say it's a little more of him just kind of explaining and just, you know, letting me know how, how he operates and just kind of how he envisions this program to be run and what he sees as the best fit for our players and for our staff and you know I think it was more just that just through conversation I, I don't know if it was really one side or the other selling each other I think we both kind of knew what we were getting into and I think it was just trying to get a little more comfortable with one another on a personal level and you know just really kind of the fit part was 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 big for both of us. In addition to being a coach you're also a husband you're a dad of two what was the conversation like at home when you first started to raise the idea of maybe moving to Dallas and taking this new job. Yeah, I'm lucky. My, my wife was the military, uh, was in the military family, so she's a little used to bouncing around. Um, you know, and I've said it before, I mean, it, it, was a, it was a tough decision. I think, you know, definitely was the right decision. I wholeheartedly feel that way, but, you know, we were in a good spot. We were in a great place. We just moved there. We were successful. Um, great place to live, so all those things um, we definitely had to talk about, but 
you know, we're both, my wife and I are both originally from Texas, and so, you know, just all things considered, we, we were pretty excited to get back. Before you got into coaching, you played first at Texas Tech and then transferred to uh, Stephen F. Austin. What kind of player were you? How would Garrett Riley, the coach, describe Garrett Riley, the quarterback? Yeah, not very good. <laughs> not very good. You know, pretty smart, good teammate, uh, very limited athletically. You know, all the things that really hurt me to say that right now, but it's true. <laughs> you always hear about coaching trees, and at Texas Tech you played for Mike Leach, who obviously has a relationship with Sonny Dykes. How similar is the offense you're going to run here compared to the one you played in at Texas Tech? Uh, you know, I think the big thing is just kind of the, the philosophy, the principles, how you practice. I think those are the biggest takeaways that I took from that. You know, how, how similar is it going to look to circa 2009, 2008 Texas Tech? It'll probably look pretty different, but I think there's, there's going to be a lot of similarities. Um, the mindset... Like I said, how you practice, I think those are the biggest, um, you know, takeaways and similarities from, from kind of that, that time period. When you talk about quarterbacks, especially from the Mike Leach era at Texas Tech, the images that come to mind are 50 points on the scoreboard and five, six, seven hundred yards and that kind of thing. But what was the offense like at Stephen F. Austin? And is there anything you took from that system to incorporate into what you're teaching? Yeah, I mean, it was, it was actually very similar. Um, the offensive coordinator at the time um, was kind of a, also a disciple from that whole tree. And so when I got to Stephen F. Austin, it was basically the same exact offense as when I was with Coach Leach at Texas Tech. So that was, that was what attracted me as a player at that point in time. You know, and again, I think it's just the philosophy and the mindset of just doing what you do and getting really, really good at it and just repetitions. Um, that's, that's stuck with me just throughout my coaching career and, um, you know, it's been successful and it's kind of stood the test of time a little bit in, in that system. Do you remember when you first considered that this is what you might want to do getting into coaching after your playing days? And what attracted you to this as a profession? Yeah, I kind of had a unique experience a little bit just because my brother was a coach uh, at the same time as I was a player at Texas Tech. And so I kind of got, you know, a little bit of both, both perspectives as a player and as a coach during that time. And, and that was unique. And, you know, just kind of seeing his career path, and obviously it's a little abnormal in the profession, how he, you know, rose through the ranks and the success he's had, but just also just kind of, I was at the right place at the right time, you know, that offense and was kind of taking everything by storm at Texas Tech with Coach Leach, and it was really new, and it was cutting edge and all those things, and it was exciting, so I think just kind of being at the right place, right time really sparked my interest in it, and, you know, really kind of developed um, a sense that that's what I wanted to do probably in college. When you signed with SMU, it was right in the middle of recruiting season and you sort of had to hit the ground running. Yep. What kind of reception did you get like from high school coaches when you're out on the road and how is recruiting for SMU different than some of the other places you've been in your career? Yeah, I got here and the very next day uh, recruiting opened. Um, so I, I, I flew in, met everybody for about five seconds and then went out on the road the next day and that's just how it is. Um, now the cool thing was, you know, for that two week period, I was pretty much in Dallas exclusively, and, you know, and saw saw a different school every day and uh, uh, multiple schools every day. Yeah, I think the reception from the high school coaches, a lot of these guys I've known and, and I've been familiar with, so that was pretty cool to to get back here, see those guys, but knowing that I was an in-state coach was pretty neat. I'd never worked in Texas before, but I've known these guys for a long time just because I'm a Texas person and Texas connections, but had a little bit different feel going into those high schools knowing that, you know, we're just right down the road and I'm not eight states away. You also, while you were starting to recruit, you also had a new team, a new offense to start to get to know. Did you have, did you immediately have uh, big meetings with the whole offense or did you start sitting down with individual players? What was that beginning, the beginning of that process like as you started to get them, get to know the new guys who were going to be working with you? Right. No, we slowly pieced it together just because of the recruiting aspect when I first got here. Um, you know, and then basically when we got off the road, we had a plan in place to just slowly implement 
the offense, let these guys understand the terminology. It gave us time as coaches to put it in so the rest of the assistants could learn it and be on the same page. So it was kind of a gradual deal uh, when I first got here and uh, it was good that you know, we started spring when we did. It gave us just the right amount of time to really get it in, let our players get a sense of what it is. And that way you can kind of hit the ground running a little bit once spring ball actually started. And it wasn't just the very first time that they had heard of what they're doing. You and Sonny Dykes, again, have similar uh, track records, certainly with the Texas Tech connection. Are there significant differences in the offense you're going to roll out on the field this year compared to what was here last year? Probably not. I mean, probably to the to the average fan, probably won't tell just a whole lot of differences. Um, you know, I mean, we were really productive last year, had a very good offense, got a lot of guys returning, so you don't want to completely wholesale change everything. You just want to make it a little bit better. And, uh, you know, there definitely will be some differences. Um, you know, we'd love to continue to find ways to create explosive plays and things of that nature like every other team in America. but. Yeah, I'd say to the average fan, I don't, I don't know if you'll just be able to tell a lot of differences. Um, you know, and then as coaches, we kind of have it in our mind what we're going to be and, and who we are, but you really don't know as you as you get through spring football, as you get through fall camp, you really identify who you're going to be, and, and that's the fun part right now is you kind of have an idea, but you don't really know until this thing really takes off and, and you kind of identify what your strengths and weaknesses are. In addition to being offensive coordinator, you're also the quarterbacks coach. So, you're—I know you're only a few practices in with your new guys. Any of the new quarterbacks remind you of yourself at all? No, that's a good thing. No. Well, the only thing I'll say, Shane's Shane's a pretty uh, calm and collected guy. I'd like to say I'm probably the same, but it kind of stops at that. He's a lot more talented than I am. <laughs> Is there a risk at all when you're a former quarterback? Is there a risk in? trying to get guys to play and do everything the way you would have done it rather than teaching to the specifics of their strengths? Is it tougher? Yeah. Is it hard to resist that urge looking for another Garrett Riley? No, no. I don't think so at all. I, I think that's the fun thing about coaching quarterbacks and that's just uh, the unique thing about that position is there's a lot of different ways to do it. And that's probably why just the general population is infatuated with the quarterback position as you have so many different types you got so many different types of leaders but there's so many great players that are kind of on different sides of the spectrum for that position and that's what's cool as a coach is you get to kind of make it your own you get to kind of tailor it to whatever that specific person what he's good at and that's kind of the fun part as a quarterback coach and as a coordinator is, is you get to tailor it to those guys there are some coaches that you often associate with certain kinds of players. Got to have a quarterback with a big arm or a big, strong running back who can take a lot of carries or a super fast wide receiver. Is there a key guy in the Garrett Riley offense that once you get that guy established, can let the rest of the unit take off? As far as quarterback or any position? Any position or any group of position group. <clears throat> yeah, I mean got to have some guys that can win one-on-ones, you know. I mean, it's hard in any offense to not be very productive if you don't have guys that can really win one-on-one -on -one battles, you know. And so I think if if you got people that can stretch the field vertically and that can truly win one-on-one -on -one matchups, it really, really opens up kind of the rest of the offense, in my opinion. So I'd say probably those outside threats. You touched on Shane Bouchelle a minute ago, and he had one of the better seasons of any quarterback in SMU history uh, last year, 34 touchdowns, almost 4,000 passing yards. But obviously fans and media don't look at players the way coaches do. So when you look at what Shane did, what do you see in him? I see a guy that's um, very, very accurate, very talented as a thrower. I see a tough person. I mean, just throughout his career at SMU and, and, and at Texas, I mean, He's played a bunch. He's taken hits. He's been in, he's been in the fire a bunch. So you get a guy that's experienced, but I think you got a tough a tough player, a guy that can play through contact and and not let a big hit affect him. You know, he kind of he's a guy that has a short term memory in a good way, where he can just kind of play the next play. Um, you know, then I just see a guy that's that's very cerebral. He, he gets the big picture things, but he, he's also really good at just the, the minute details of, 
of the play and the concepts. And so that's what's exciting for me to get around him is to truly kind of understand his personality and kind of what makes him tick. Um, but from just the little I have been around him and then just watching his tape from last year, those are the things that, that stand out. A lot of coaches talk about wanting to establish a, a level of balance between passing and running. And Shane got a lot of headlines last year for all his yards and touchdowns and everything. But they also, uh, Xavier Jones and Kamen Freeman had, I think, 69% of the carries and 80% of the rushing touchdowns. Xavier set a record for rushing touchdowns. When you look at the group you have in camp now in spring practice, have you been able to establish an opinion of what you've got in the running back room? Yeah, I, I, I'm pleased with what we've done to two practices. Now your first two practices are non-padded, um, so as a tailback, that's always hard just from an evaluation standpoint. But I think we have some capable people in there for sure. Um, I think there's a variety of different backs, which is fun for a coach, that you don't have four guys that are all kind of the same dude or the same type of runner. I think we have variety, uh, which is good. Um, you know, so I, I've been pleased with those guys within the first two practices. We'll kind of see and, and see where we're at here on Thursday, tomorrow, once the pads come on. You've got a sort of a variety of quarterbacks to work with as well. Shane is certainly the most experienced guy, but Will is a big, strong guy. Terrence is maybe the quickest of, of the bunch. Um, is it hard to teach the quarterbacks when you have that many different styles and that many different talents? rather than trying to sort of merge the guys into more similar skill sets? I don't think so, really. You know, I think I think that's kind of our job as coaches is you, you put in your general base offense and you kind of pick and choose from that system of what each guy can do from a quarterback standpoint. You know, and the, the great thing about our philosophy and our offense is it's going to be quarterback friendly. You know, if it's not easy on them, then we're not going to do it. No matter how good it looks on paper or X's and O's wise, how good it is. If it's not friendly to them, then we're not going to mess with it. You touched earlier on your brother Lincoln. Um, and I suppose it's probably easy to start drawing comparisons because of the family name and all that. But, um, it's maybe not necessarily fair to assume that you and he are the exact same. What kind of differences are there between you and your brother as coaches? It's a good question. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I think there's probably a, lot, probably a lot of more similarities than there are differences. Um, you know, just probably what we believe in and, and how you treat players and how you operate with those guys. I think uh, I would say there's probably a lot more similarities than differences. Um, you know, it's hard to say. You know, I've worked with him before, but it's been several years, and since he's been in Oklahoma, I haven't worked with him, and, and obviously they've been very successful, and it kind of changed each and every year depending on kind of who they have at quarterback, really, and what they have. You know, I think that's probably something that I've taken just from watching his career and other coaches that, that I respect is, is the ability to stay within your system but also be able to adapt with what you have, you know, and I think that's what the great ones do. Um, so I know that really doesn't answer your question, so I probably more similarities than differences. If SMU and Oklahoma ever start recruiting the same kid, could you look a guy in the eye and say you don't want to go play for Lincoln Riley? Yeah, we'll, we'll, go, we'll definitely go head to head because he'll be saying the same thing, right? So that, that's just kind of the brotherly love, I guess. When, when you see each other, do you guys even talk football or is it all family and non-football related when you spend time together? Yeah, I mean... Obviously, everybody wants to know kind of that part of it. Very little football, you know, I think just because we're, we both know kind of what each other's going through and just kind of your daily operation. And, you know, I, I think that if there's ever a real question of something you really are curious about, then we certainly ask. But I think a lot of it, we just kind of let each other do their own deal and, and uh, kind of respect that part of it. When, when new players join a team, either as freshmen or transfers, there is sometimes a, a learning curve, a transition period as they get used to their new teammates and new coaches and all that. As a coach now joining a team that's already been playing together, is there a similar transition learning period for you or is yours a system or, or is your familiarity with the same kind of system that 
uh, Coach Dykes and Lashley ran last year. Does that allow you to hit the ground running and theoretically be productive from day one? Yeah, I was actually a little fortunate. Um, you know, when I came in here just watching all the SMU tape from last year, is I had a base understanding of what was going on, but I was pretty fortunate with being with Coach Drinkwitz last year, who also came from kind of that Auburn Malzahn tree like Lashley did. So it made a lot more sense to me coming into this, seeing what Brett was doing last year. I was able to kind of identify what he was trying to get accomplished just because I had a base understanding of that whole tree as well. Um, and, and to be honest, that probably allowed me to hit the ground running a little bit more had I not known kind of what they were doing. I think that kind of helped. And so the cool thing was, you know, now is what can you carry it over? What can you take that they were doing well? What fits into kind of how I envision our offense to be ran? And, and you kind of put it all together.